Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another meal prep video. So in today's meal prep, this meal prep is not near as big as a lot of the other ones I have done in the past. However, it doesn't matter if you don't feel like doing a large meal prep that week. Even if you meal prep just a few things, it'll still give you a great start to the week. So I hope you guys find some inspiration and motivation in this video to meal prep for yourself and your family. Let's get in the kitchen and let's get started. All right, so we are going to start off this meal prep with some bacon. And I just like to throw my bacon on a pan and I usually cover it with aluminum foil. And I throw mine in the oven because it's less mess and I cook it at 400 degrees. And I usually cook mine around 20 minutes, but I mean, everybody likes theirs to their own crispiness. And again, the oven just keeps my stove a little bit cleaner, which I like. Next up, I'm going to be boiling some eggs. Some of it is going to be for an egg salad, and then some of it's just going to be for hard-boiled eggs. I do it in my Instant Pot. I throw one cup of water in there, and then I just press the egg button, and I let them cook for four minutes. And then I throw them in an ice bath for five minutes, and they peel like a dream. So I used all of them in the egg salad except for four. Then with the egg salad, I know I've said this about a dozen times, but if you don't have an egg slicer, invest in one. That thing is amazing. The best invention for eggs ever. <laughs> so I just sliced up six eggs and this is going to be for the egg salad. And then I chopped up some fresh chives as well as some fresh parsley. And I threw that in there as well as some of that Tony's seasoning. That is the first time I've ever tried it. That stuff is so stinking good. Thank you for that recommendation. I also put in there some Dijon mustard, some mayonnaise. I don't really measure things. I just kind of eyeball it. I also like to add some sour cream because I think the sour cream and the mayonnaise kind of gives it a nice flavor in my opinion and I really like it. So that's what it looked like when it was done, and Oscar loved this. With that Tony seasoning and the fresh herbs, it was superb. So good. Next up, I am going to be making a meatball casserole. I am going to be using two pounds of ground beef, throw it in some salt, whipped cream, pepper, parsley, onion powder, oregano, garlic, Parmesan cheese. I only have one egg out, but I did put two in there and then crushed pork rinds. So I threw the two pounds of the ground beef in there. That is probably around a half a cup to maybe three fourths cup of crushed pork rinds. As you see, my daughter was helping me out again this week. She is such an amazing kid, but she only added in one egg. We do add in another one later. And then I'm bad about measuring stuff, so I didn't really measure it, but I did add in probably like around a teaspoon of the parsley. Same thing with the oregano. I added in around a teaspoon of that as well. And then just a little sprinkle of pepper, probably around a half a teaspoon, another teaspoon of salt. And then in total, even though we did it over increments, we added in probably around a fourth a cup to a third a cup of heavy whipping cream. And then another probably half a cup of Parmesan cheese, as well as a heaping tablespoon of garlic. We kind of mixed it in a little bit. And then as you can see, we did add that other egg, as well as some more heavy whipping cream because it just was a little bit too dry. So we needed to moisten that up just a little bit, but we just went in there with our handy dandy hands and started making meatballs. Celine went ahead and took our casserole dish and she just spread some avocado oil all over it. And as you can see in the background, Celine is preparing a spaghetti squash. She's just getting all the seeds out of it and we are going to cook that in the Instant Pot. But for now, we're gonna cook those meatballs in the oven at 400 degrees. I let them cook in there around 25 minutes, then I took them out, I turned them over, and I put them in probably like around another five minutes. Once they were done, I went ahead and put the marinara on there. The marinara that I am using is actually a pizza sauce. I get this at the Dollar Tree. It has, I think, like one more carb than some of the other low-carb um, choices out there, but the ingredients are clean 
and for a buck, you cannot go wrong in my own personal opinion. But I just threw that on there, and then I also took some mozzarella, and I sprinkled that over the top as well. And this is such an easy-peasy dish to make, and it is a huge hit with my family and anybody basically that comes over. And we actually ended up putting the meatballs over the... Um, spaghetti squash. It was so, so good, but that is what it looks like. I probably put it in there for another 15 minutes, just enough to get the cheese melty on the top. But again, this is delicious. If you guys like meatballs, give this a try because this just gives meatballs a whole new level. So next up, we are going to be cooking the spaghetti squash in the Instant Pot. So in the bottom of the Instant Pot, you're just going to want to pour one cup of water, and that is plenty, and then arrange your spaghetti squash in there so that way they're a little bit open. That way we can really cook the inside of those. Make sure your Instant Pot is on sealing. I just put mine on manual, and I cooked them for literally seven minutes. That's all it took, and then I took the lid off. If you do have condensation in the middle of your spaghetti squash, make sure you dump out that water before you start forking out the squash. So that way um, your squash doesn't become soggy. I don't like soggy squash. In my opinion, spaghetti squash is the best substitute for spaghetti noodles. I think this is better than zoodles. But next up, we're gonna be making keto cinnamon crumb cake muffins. I am just going to put in that bowl one cup of almond flour, a half a cup of whatever erythritol of your choice, one fourth cup of butter, and then we're just gonna mix that up and then we're gonna set a fourth a cup of that mixture off to the side because that's gonna be the crumb for the top of the muffin. Next up, we're gonna take the other half a cup of butter that the recipe calls for and we're gonna melt it in the microwave and then I finally got myself some silicone cupcake molds. No more sticking for this girl. <laughs> so I put in there one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of almond extract, and then two large eggs into the rest of that mixture that we mixed up earlier. And then also the other half a cup of butter. And then I'm just going to mix it up and I'm going to fill up all of those molds evenly and this is a brand new recipe this recipe will be in the description box below if you guys are interested in giving it a try so this recipe was pretty good it's not my favorite i'm gonna leave my favorite cinnamon muffin recipe down in the description box below i'll put on there my favorite oscar really enjoyed this though um and it was pretty good so don't get me wrong but i did bake those at 350 degrees and i baked them for around 24 minutes and if you saw, I did put the crumb mixture, that one fourth cup mixture that we saved back, I did put that on the top of the muffins as well. And that is how they turned out. Again, they were delicious, but they just aren't my favorite. I will leave the link to both of the muffins in the description box below. So next up, we are going to be marinating meat again. This may be like a weekly thing because this is what my family loves. So we're gonna be marinating some pork chops again. So we just make it easy. We put the pork chops in a Ziploc bag and then we did squeeze an entire lemon into that bag, a half a bunch of cut up cilantro, a fourth a cup of soy sauce, shook in salt, pepper, and garlic powder, and then just gave it a shake, shake, shake. Next up, we're going to be marinating some steak and those are all the ingredients that we are going to put in there. It is delicious. We've done this before. We actually did it last week and we're gonna do it the same way. We're just going to put the steak right in the Ziploc bag. We're going to squeeze a couple of lemons right straight into the bag. And then we are also going to add a little bit of sriracha because that gives it such amazing flavor. As well as oregano, we are going to put in there some Worcestershire sauce, some pepper, some salt. Uh, we are going to throw in there a little bit of garlic powder, some soy sauce, a little bit of olive oil and some garlic and just give it a shake 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 we don't really measure it because it's just a marinade same thing with the chicken we are going to throw in all those ingredients again absolutely delicious throw the chicken in a bag we are going to squeeze a couple of lemons in that one as well 
Throw in there some garlic, some salt, some pepper, a little bit of oregano, and a little bit of thyme, as well as some olive oil. Same thing, we didn't really measure anything out because it's just a marinade, it doesn't have to be perfect, but we just gave all those a shake and let them marinate in the fridge for several hours before we threw them on the grill. The longer they marinate, the more they take on those flavors and the juicier and more moist they are. And then we just cook them right on the grill. So delicious. Marinating your meat makes such a huge difference. Not going to lie, there's definitely times where I'm lazy, but I need to stop being lazy and marinate every time because it makes a huge difference. So good. Next up, we are going to be making fried radishes. If you haven't had fried radishes, they taste like potatoes. They take on like a red potato flavor. And I'm just going to cut them up into really small pieces. I'm just going to use my chopper there. I will leave my chopper that I really like in the description box below. And that is how small you really want them. You really want them really tiny because you really want them to cook down rather well. I took about four pieces of bacon. I just cut them up with my kitchen scissors and I'm gonna saute that bacon in the pan before I throw the radishes in there because then I'm going to cook the radishes in the bacon grease and the bacon. So radishes fried are amazing. Radishes fried in bacon are even better. And the key to fried radishes is you want to really cook them very well. So what I try to look for when I cook the radishes, as you see, I cover them with a lid, but I really try to let them get a little bit translucent so that way um, they are just super tender. And then I like to even get them a little bit browned. And I'm going to use that Tony's uh, seasoning. It says use it on everything. So this girl's going to use it on everything. It is delicious. Holy moly. Again, thank you for that recommendation. But as you see, I just cook the heck out of those radishes. I let them turn a little bit brown. And, and the longer you let them cook, the more they will take on that red potato flavor. They are so good. If you haven't tried them, give them a try. All right, so that is the end of this week's meal prep. Short and simple this week. If you guys like this type of video, if you could do me a favor and smash that like button. And also, if you are not part of my Simply Misty family, Go ahead and smash that subscribe button as well because I would love to have you as part of my YouTube family. Don't forget, if you make any of these meals or if you are meal prepping, tag me on Instagram. I'll leave my Instagram in the description box below. I love to see what you guys are cooking up in the kitchen. And like always, I hope this gave you some inspiration and motivation. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate every single one of you guys. And don't forget to go out there and make today even better than yesterday. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.